Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and for this week's video, I wanted to try something new, something I've never done before, and obviously from the title of the video, it's kind of given it away, but I do that on purpose. Um, I want you to know that your time is valuable. It's valuable to me. You are important to me, and I want you to know that the time you give me, I really appreciate, and I am humbled by it. So I try to make my titles as transparent as possible so you know where you want to spend your time and where you have time to spend. So this is how I'm starting this. So this is my planner from last year and I made some notes. I will link the flip through if you wanna see how I fill filled this whole Hobonichi weeks. But I had this idea for a stop motion animation and initially, um, in December of 2022, when I went to do my paper purchase for the year, I knew I wanted to do a stop motion animation YouTube video. And I knew it would take a ton of time to do it. And I knew the end video would be really, really quick. <laughs> so going in, I have very realistic expectations of this project, um, but I still wanna do it and I still wanna try it. And I still think it's just really, really cool. Um, so I had made all my notes last year just on a page and I had on like notes for different sketchbooks and things just trying to come up with different ideas and inspiration um, for days where I'm like not feeling it. I have pages and pages of notes in all my planners. So initially I was going to buy a, a pad of paper just for this project and I was thinking well it has to be kind of thinner paper. Um, ideally, a light table or light box is used to make sure that you're getting the subtle changes from illustration to illustration to show the movement. Sorry, my, my cats are having fun. Um, and I was like, well, a thin paper and I would need a lot of it, so probably newsprint. Um, they had a 500 stack of newsprint for about $12. I was like, I don't know that I would need 500 sheets. Um, also, I'm not buying a light table or a light box. This is what a low buy art supply looks like. It's creative problem solving with what you already have. So I have a sketchbook that I purchased in September of 2021. And it's really cool. It's stitched together. You can see the threads out the top. Um, this is by Gen G Studios. I will link her Etsy shop. She is based out of the United States. Um, you can kind of see there are signatures here. This is newsprint paper. Now what she's done is she's done different sort of abstract splashes and designs on this paper to give it some um, visual interest before you go to create on it or over it. And I thought, you know, there's 50 sheets, it's 100 pages. This would be perfect for a stop motion animation. And if the background sort of flickers different colors from her different pages, that might look really, really cool. So I want to just sort of show you what the pages look like in mine. And all of her sketchbooks are like this. Um, they're all about six by eight inches. Um, you can pick sort of what color the front color is but then the inside is sort of what she has. So it's kind of a surprise what you get and what you decide to do, um, what comes on the pages. I just think it's a really cool idea for illustrating over. Now, um, I could have very easily saved this and done like ink and then just done it one-sided, made sure I had a pencil board because newsprint is really thin and ink and things bleed. So I would have had to have figured out how to protect the next sheet. And then I could have done ink portraits or illustrations on top of these really unique designs. <laughs> My cats have opposable thumbs. Um, <laughs> so that was one thing I could have done. I could have used this for like pastels or acrylic paint or some sort of tempura egg paint wash. But I think charcoal, I can create on one page and it'll it'll be okay if it smudges. I'm not doing any fixative spray. I'm gonna have this be, it's not gonna be hyper realistic. I'm going to do sort of quick sketch silhouette type shapes. 
um, and see if I can get those through subtle changes into motion. And but again, I know the backgrounds are going to be kindly kind of um, different, <laughs> so it may be a little distracting. Um, it may look really cool. I don't know. This one says Colorado. Um, Denver is the capital of Colorado. It is it is a high elevation. If you like winter sports and mountains, that's that's the place to do it. Okay. So you can see all these pages are so vastly different from each other. Um, this book was fairly affordable. Again, I just sat on it because I had so many other things I wanted to get through. And I found that with color substrate paper, um, it takes me a long time to want to use it. Again, the way she stitched it, there's pockets in the actual sketchbook. Um, I, I have her business card tucked in. I'm not sponsored by anybody or anything. I just wanted to show you this product that I'm going to be using for this because when I go to photograph what I'm doing, people are going to be like, wow, where'd you get that? And so this is that. But before I start creating in here, I need a plan. So I have my notes of what I want to draw. I need to create some form of plan so it evens out. I know going in this is going to take a while and I know when I am done and I photograph each single page it's going to be really quick but I think if I illustrate this in a thoughtful planned out way I can loop the illustration and run through it a couple times therefore sort of enjoying the experience just a little bit more because it's a little bit longer. So that is the idea. Now to loop illustrations and be thoughtful of all 100 pages, I think I'm going to have to storyboard this layout a little bit. And for this, I am using my Archer and Olive. This is one of their dot journals. Um, it's the linen. I would say don't purchase linen if you have pets or dust. <laughs> um, there are tons of really great bullet journal, dot journal books out there. This one has the really thick paper. Um, so what I'm going to do is sort of write down my initial idea and the elements I want to include in this illustration. Um, gosh. And the basic of terms and then I just I'm gonna have to figure out how to space it and this may be too much and I might have to remove some of the elements okay so if I think out of 100 pages, if I plan out sort of, I'm going to initially plan the first 10. And those are going to be sort of the key core elements that the pages in between have to get me from one to the other. Fairly evenly, fairly distributed in a way that looks like movement. Again, this might be really jagged and sort of <laughs> it may look overly arty and it may not look like a stop motion video at all. Again, I just need to figure out how I'm going to do this. And I may simplify it so I can have more subtle movement to keep that sort of stop motion going. Now there are some stop motion um, creators on this platform. There's one that does stop motion within toys that are really cool. And then he shows the behind the scene process of how slowly he moves the toys to photograph them, to create the videos. And it's really, really cool. I will link his channel. Um, for the creation, I am using Vine Charcoal. This is the Knit Room. Um, it takes me a really long time to go through one stick. So I'm not worried about running about out of supplies. That's kind of some of the things I don't want to worry about. <clears throat> Is not having enough paper so I need to make sure what you know the mediums aren't gonna bleed and that I'm not gonna run out of mediums 
I don't want to have that on my mind. The only thing I want to think about is getting done all these pages within this week and then making sure that they flow and that the story sort of makes sense and you can visually sort of see the movement within the different photos when I put all the photos together. Now, I could not have done this without editing software, which is why I didn't do this last year. And again, this is gonna be over a 12 minute video. So this is why I am doing it this year and making sure I have everything <laughs> that I need. And I sort of want to, if you're really curious about this, I want to take you along with this process and sort of document how long these things take. Again, the initial idea that I came up with only took me about five to 10 minutes. Sometimes I'm just sitting there at night and like weird ideas hit me and I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. You know what I should do with that? And then I just make a note. And then again, it can take me over a year to get to that idea if I ever get to that idea. So I'm going to now start storyboarding and figuring out if I can get all these ideas into it. If not, I'm going to simplify it and I'll let you know. Okay. So I have my main ideas and keep in mind the storyboard sketches are always super rough. But again, I'm not doing hyper realism for this idea. So I kind of have the main, it looks a little morbid. It's not morbid, it's meant to be beautiful. Um, and then it should end where it starts. So it loops back around again. Um, that's the idea. So it's very, so I have all the pages in between. If these are every 10 pages, but I have nine pages in between to get from here to here. And I think with taking some of the ideas out and just keeping it really simple, that should be more achievable within the 100 pages. Now, again, I've never done this before. <laughs> so I just, I like to jump in all at once. So that's what I'm going to do. So with this in mind of, well, page one and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. This gives me a lot of space within here to wiggle around. I have 10 extra pages, which is good to make sure that it's smooth transitioning from illustration to illustration to get my idea across. So all that's left is to keep all my notes nearby then. And should I ever want to go back to the original idea, again, I have that in my old planner. If I want to do this again, I'm not sure. So I kind of have to do it once to see if I'm going to like it. And I'm going to be doing it this horizontal or landscape orientation just so I can maximize the illustration per page. So it's time to get started. Okay, so I'm not using a light box and I'm probably not going to be doing spray fixative. I would just go through like an entire can on this and I'm worried because I'm going to be sketching fairly quickly. Um, that there, I don't know, I just worry <laughs> with that on newsprint and drying times. And I know it's March, but where we live, our humidity is super high, so drying takes a long time. And I haven't made a tools purchase, so I don't have any drying tools. Now, to keep this flowing and going how it should go, um, typically people draw and then they put it over light or a window and then they grab another page and lay it over the top and then change the one subtle difference and trace over it. Um, I'm drawing front to back so I have all the pages. So my next page is this one right here. So I can't really do that plus I don't have a light box. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be measuring. Um, with things like this, you either spend the time or you spend the money. I'm not spending the money, so I'm spending the time, and that's fine. I'll listen to music and audiobooks and my family tell stories and just hang out and be groovy, all those things. So what I'm gonna do is I have a little tiny ruler, and this is definitely a tool I need to replace. You can see numbers are 
<laughs> missing. It's well loved. But I'm just going to use the metric system. I'm going to use centimeters. And I'm going to map out where my horse is and then make sure that everything lines up but a couple little pieces on the next illustration so it looks like he's gently moving. So here's my charcoal. And I'm not pre-sketching this either. <laughs> this is really like <laughs> fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I have a couple erasers. I have a Factus and then I have a Faber-Castell. This is uh, their stick perfection eraser. Uh, the pink end is much better. So if the charcoal where I've laid it down isn't working for me, I can always go back and sort of move it around. But I figure with vine charcoal, like I don't have to commit so hard. We'll see. This is vine charcoal over this tempera paint right now. Can you see that? So I am just doing an outline here. If you're wondering what I'm drawing, I am doing a silhouette of a horse. Um, horses are really cool animals. So let's see if I can convey this message. Now I have compressed charcoal. I have really dark um, charcoal sticks. Um, I know there's going to be transfer and things and fading, so I'll have to photograph it pretty quickly. Um, I kind of like the idea of it trying to fight for permanence. Um, I don't know if I'll have to go back with those. I just have to be really, really careful because with compressed sticks, I tend to uh, be pretty rough sometimes and I rip the paper trying to get it completely pitch, pitch black. All right, so this is the horse's first movement. And there is a hoof that is up. Okay, and that can be seen and then horses have tails. Sometimes, sometimes they're braided or clipped or tied up, like braided into like a little folded up bun situation. But that is really hard to see. So, hmm. pretty lean horse, isn't it? There's tons of different styles and types of horses like Mustangs and Clydesdales and Clydesdales are huge. If you ever get the opportunity to see one of those in person, I would highly recommend doing that. I have seen, um, there is a beer company in the United States called Budweiser and they have Clydesdales that they use for some of their commercials. I'll link one of their commercials so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I had the opportunity to see those horses in person. My goodness, they are massive. <laughs> massive feels like a word that's too small to describe them. They're really cool though. Okay, so that's the first one. <laughs> and then knowing where it's placed. So we have five, we have eight. And then from here to here, there's four. Here to here, there's two centimeters. So that is how I'm going to try and line it up. I really hope this works. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next page.
Okay. After about two hours and 45 minutes of sketching with charcoal, uh, I'm done. <laughs> so all in all, from start to finish, I would say, and I didn't finish all the pages. I did about, mm, let's see, that's 10 and that's 10. I did about 75 pages instead of 100. Um, from start to finish, three hours. So that's kind of cool um, that it's not like a full week thing. If you want to try this, if you want to experiment, um, I just have such respect for folks with attention to detail, uh, comic book illustrators. It's the drawing the same thing over and over with like little tiny shifts. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a detail person. I'm very big slapdash. So I'm really hoping that this turns out and this looks okay. Um, if it doesn't, then I failed with grace and I learned a ton that maybe um, having a more detailed sort of presentation and draw out of working for each page might be something that I need to have a more clear, concise plan. Again, I just sort of drew really quickly um, in my book, <clears throat> this, and this was kind of my loose leaf plan, but maybe this wasn't detailed enough. Um, if I ever go to do this again, I think once a year <laughs> is plenty. Um, I'm really hoping I can loop it and maybe turn it into something that I could put on multiple platforms. That might be really cool. Like if I could put this as a movie on um, Instagram or something and kind of like, <laughs> look at three hours of work in 30 seconds. Um, again, this is just an experiment. I've always wanted to try this. I've never done it before. So, all right, let's get to the video. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week. I am doing another um, full over an hour instruction video. It's going to be pen and ink illustration if you are interested in a tutorial of that. So that will be up next weekend. Again, I hope your week is wonderful. Bye.